Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We have decided we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And today is June the 16th, 2022. So excited to be here with you on today. Don't forget to visit us on our website at www.angelferguson-ministries.com. Hope you have been enjoying the content that we have been sharing with you. And I want to further the discussion. I want to talk about the designer's original. That's right. Designer's original. Want to share a few other things with you as we are stepping further into our mentoring and aspects of being a life coach. I am a certified life coach as well as a licensed and ordained pastor in the gospel of the ministry. I have a purpose, I have a plan, and I absolutely love my purpose. My plan I prepare for and I do through presentation. My purpose is to motivate you. My purpose is to get you to take a look at what's already inside of you your purpose that's right you were created for a reason and you have already been gifted with specific gifts and talents now our job is to assist you in discovering what those gifts and talents are if we were to really take a look at our life and what we do we will find that we are already operating in, working in, walking in our purpose. And you can definitely detect this by your passion. If you love to encourage others as I do, motivating them and uh, encouraging them to live their dreams, to step out in faith, then guess what? That is a part of your purpose. But I must say this, Become the first partaker of your words. And so whatsoever you share with anyone, whatever you encourage someone to do, make sure that you are doing it yourself. Because I am a firm believer, I pay attention to the advice that others give me. That's right. I pay attention to the model and the makeup of their lives. I look and see well, what have they achieved? I also look and see the discipline in their lives. And so I, I weigh the advice that I receive because I look at the beholder of the words. Well, I'm never going to tell you something that I don't do. I'm never going to encourage you to step out in faith if that's not something I do. But I step out in faith every single day. I step out in faith in whether it's in publishing, writing books, not just for the ministry, but publishing for others, getting on the air and talking to you. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. And I have stepped out in faith when I told myself, uh-uh, I'm not doing that one. But I did it anyway. And so I encourage you to do the same. What we want to talk about today is the designer's original. Although you might have the same gift, the same talent, no two people, no two gifts will operate the same. You are divinely and distinctively, uniquely created. You're not going to do everything like someone else. Yes, there might be two realtors in the room, but you each have your own module by which you work. You each do a presentation totally different, but you want the same outcome. So never compare yourself to anyone else. Never look over at anyone else and say, oh, I can't do it like them, so I can't do it. Never 
compare your journey with anyone else because the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but to the one that endures to the end your job is just to finish so do not compete with anyone else a few years ago I wrote this poem and it's entitled the soul of a woman one day I begin to think and I realized that the next person was not my competition I myself am my own competition because I want to do better I want to achieve in this module of six months more than I achieved in the last module and so instead of trying to keep up and compete with the next person I am still trying to impress myself and guess what I really haven't hit the knack yet I haven't totally impressed myself I'm still reaching towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus and that is where I am so there are some marks that I desire to make and if I pay attention to my marks if I pace myself in my own journey if I perfect the gifts that are within me the next person is not my competition I am my own competition because I need to critique and develop some things within me and if I pay attention to my critiquing if I pay attention to my errors and my shortcomings to tell you the truth I really don't have time to focus on yours why because one day I realized I am a designers original and there is nothing that I do that someone else can do it's the title not the function it's the title not the work and so yes you can have the same title but you will work differently you will flow in a much different way and a much different pace and so if you have found yourself to compete with others stop it stop competing with anybody else because here is the truth of the matter when they are before your eyes you can only see what they are doing and you're competing with what you see what is visible before you but you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors you do not know their level of commitment you do not understand how they can become so consistent and you have no idea about the drive that they have with them within them to complete you are not a part of their planning process to prepare for a presentation and so you cannot compete with what you do not have access to you only have access to what you see a couple of years ago I had a student within the school of ministry and she said to me that uh, she learned a very valuable lesson she would look at those who taught Bible study and taught Sunday school and s sat there and judged them by what she saw and said oh I can do that and I can do it this way and I can do it better until she was called upon to do it and so she didn't realize what it took to teach Bible study in Sunday school she did not realize the level of study and getting a revelation so that you can have a presentation and so she found herself in a place of being corrected because she compared herself with the presentation she had no idea what went on behind the scenes and so I say to you be a designers original don't be a copycat you're gifted you have purpose you have ideas tap into them yes we are inspired by what we see but don't take something apart and try to emulate it try to duplicate it because it will never be yours it will never have 
your voice. I say that often when I look at different posts online and I see people quoting other things and I'm screaming out loud but yet within saying where is your voice? Why are you posting someone else's words? Yes, they are encouraging, but you have words within you on your own. I've seen other small businesses online, and I'm going to tell you, yes, I'm not talking about the level of, of, of product that they put out. I'm talking about the level of the mindset, emulating and copying what another person puts out. That's not original. It's a good idea. But just because you see it, that doesn't mean you have to do it. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning into the balance of life, and I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. Today we're talking about the designer's original, which is you. On last week, I got some very encouraging words. Very, very, very encouraging from someone that I recently met, and I thank her for her words of encouragement. She reminded me that there are going to be times that individuals will come and, and try and take, uh, or should I say, utilize a teaching that I have done in written format and try to use it for themselves. But she reminded me of this very important fact, and I am sharing it with you today. They may try to teach it, but they'll never be able to teach it like you because you were anointed to teach it that particular way. I say the same thing to you. There are going to be times that someone will try to snag your idea, copy what you have done, teach, say what you have said, but it will never have the impact that it had when it was given unto you and you were the originator. It will never release into the atmosphere the way it released through you because it was given unto you. A duplication never stands forever. You know why? Because it does not have the foundation of what it took to put it together. So, I'm saying to you, as I say to myself, you are a designer's original. Be you. Be uniquely and divinely you. There is no reason for you to compete or compare. None whatsoever. And be careful who you share with. Be very careful. All right. I want to shift. Today I want to get two subjects in. For the past month, I have been uh, dealing with restructuring my time. And I'm going to share this with you because it is so significant. Now, in times past, when this thought came to me, I would start and I'm going to be very transparent to tell you that I kind of got back into my comfort zone. And then there are those times when I was prompted to uh, shift in structuring my time and I just didn't do it. How do you like that? Someone who's very transparent, I'm truthful. Well, over the past month, I have been sticking to this restructuring of my time. And as I shared with you yesterday, I have been getting a lot done. Well, here's something that came to me, and I want to share this with you. The reason why we go through a process of restructuring our time, it stretches us, and it makes room for more to come in. You see, if I am stagnant, if I only remain at one level, then I don't have room for more to come in. And so you know what? I was blaming other things for my lack of expansion, 
when all along it was me. I did not make room to expand. That's a hard pill to swallow. But when it hit me, when it came to me, I said, ouch. And I thought about it. I said, you mean to tell me I have been complaining about lack of expansion, some things I wasn't getting done, some things were getting neglected. I thought that there was some hindrance in the atmosphere and I was blaming that when all along it was me. I did not make room for what I wanted. And I have found so excited that as I have been restructuring my time, giving things a certain amount of time, that I have more space to work on things throughout the day, which allows me to expand. It is also assisting me with meeting deadlines for more projects to, that I can touch. Since I have restructured my time, let me tell you, on yesterday, and I can release this because guess what? The work is done. <laughs> I have been able to uh, complete another book this year. We've already completed and it available, uh, The Keys of Promises. But I was able to complete, and I'm waiting on uh, the proof, but the work is already done, Revelations of the Sky. With, with me structuring my time and pacing myself, I was able to get the content together. It is a, a book of gallery of photos, along with some commentary and some teaching. It's in hardcover. I believe we have it at 75 pages. This is my first book for myself in ministry, releasing a book like this. We've done a book like this for a client before, but never for myself. So this is the first for myself, releasing this type of book. And with restructuring our time, we were able to accomplish this. Now, working at a certain time for a certain length of time on it per day the work has been done so excited about that so i'm releasing that to you for the first time here on the air and so we will release the book in the month of if we don't release it by the end of june the first of july we will release it for purchase but do you see how i was able to structure my time restructuring so that that space for opening up for expansion I can get back to editing some other books that we have due to release this year I can continue to work on clients books I can continue to expand with the magazine and there I was I was complaining listen I'm just being real honest with you I was complaining and I was saying something is holding up my expansion and all along it was me so as you are looking over your business plans and, and even apply this to ministry restructure your time put things in perspective all depends on what time you start your day all depends on what you have to do for that day assign each task an hour work on that task alone and complete as much as you can within that task for one hour and then move to something else you will not believe what you can accomplish getting things done 
begin to balance out what you give a task if something is priority and it needs a little bit more time give it an hour and a half two hours but move to something else I am enjoying this I've gotten so much done I am not so tired and fatigued and because I work for me everything that I do is 100% ministry publishing radio television ministry all of those are what I do and then I am an assistant pastor with the ministry and so everything I do there was an accountability for my time but I was literally holding myself in a place of stagnation and I realized I was wasting a lot of time I said I wanted to get some things done but I didn't make room for it it's a part of my purpose but I didn't make room for it and so as we have been sharing with you over the past couple of weeks and especially uh, this week planning to prepare to present restructure your time it's okay to shift it doesn't mean that you failed it just means that we need to reevaluate the way that we do things and lastly I want to talk about position as you are restructuring your time I want you to take a look at your position now some positions only have an allotment for you to be in place but it has no authority so ask yourself what does my position hold am I just holding a title or do I have any authority because just because you have a position if you're not the owner of the business or the founder of the ministry or what have you you might only have a position out of title only and so you have no real authority to do anything you're just there to do what they ask you to do you have no authority to make any decisions it is the same when it comes to leadership roles if you are a leader do you have others that you lead and do you have permission to lead them I love the book how successful people lead by John Maxwell very very good book if you are one who you are in a leadership position you might want to grab a copy of that and there is also a devotional book on leadership promises for every day I love those two books If you are in a leadership position, do you not know that you really have to gain the permission to lead people and they watch you by example? As I said in the beginning, I would never share with you or tell you or encourage you to do something that I don't do. I am one that I want to know the vision and I want to know how to get to the vision and 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 I want to move strategically to accomplish that which I have been allowed to see I like to reach goals goals are accomplishments and I like to work towards the finish line that's my bucket list I like unity I like to encourage others and I want to know what gifts and talents are in you what ideas do you have because I don't have all of the answers that is how you gain permission to lead others it's all about what you invest in them and if you have not invested in yourself then you cannot invest in others a valuable lesson that my father taught me years ago 
and I stand by this you cannot teach you cannot give you cannot do you cannot believe your faith has to match at the same level of your experience I can't teach above what I have knowledge of if I don't have knowledge of a thing I can't teach it if I don't have experience in a thing how can I talk about it I might talk about it but I don't understand it because I didn't experience it and so I have no real accountability to tell you so pay attention to your position does your position hold authority once you discover if your position holds any kind of authority then it will determine the level of your commitment your consistency and your desire to complete it will also help you in the planning process to prepare for presentations it is based off of your position and so ask yourself what is my position do I have any authority to lead do I have any authority to make any suggested changes can I utilize my ideas if you are working within a company these are some questions you need to find out but if you are the owner of a business or a company or the founder of a ministry then understand and define your role as founder let the people know that yes you do have a vision and that you desire assistance with from those who are going to help you bring that vision to pass but we must give them something to work with when they come uh, already have some things in place already have some uh, a, a road map of what you've already done let them know where you're heading that is the position of leadership that is the position of someone who has a vision and if you have a vision that is for the benefit of those upon the earth you have a great vision to better the lives of others as well as yourself your family that is a great vision but do something with the vision you get an understanding of it first put down your ideas before you present them to a team I believe you can do this I know you can I know you can do this I know that you are a designers original that what you do although someone else might have the same title you will not operate and move the same there is greatness inside of you I believe it I want you to believe it yourself remind yourself of that when the tough times come and you want to throw in the towel tell yourself that's not an option because you were created for a purpose and you have a portion of a greater work you have a portion of a greater vision that's bigger than you and in my clothes yes the vision is supposed to be bigger than you yes it's going to take a all-in mindset so plan well become committed learn to be consistent prepare for a presentation on the day of completion I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of you today is my Friday and if I am allowed to 
I'll be back on next Tuesday. Have a blessed day, everyone.